The following is a paid commercial program, paid for by New Life Worship Center. The opinions and views expressed in this program belong to its sponsors and are not those of this station or their affiliates or their employees. He saw me where I was and saved me in the projects, from the projects, and gave a charge to me, a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the higher servants and went after him. It was early in the morning. Few people were on the shore at that hour. About the only people active that early in the morning were the weary fishermen who were finishing another hard night of fishing on the Sea of Galilee. Things are winding down and all the men are anxious to get their catch to market and then to go home to get some rest. But as they finish their activities for that morning, a man passes by along the shoreline. An unusual man. Something different about this man. He calls out to the men in the boats, invites them to come follow him. When he does, four of the men in the boats leave their nets and boats behind to follow this man as his disciples. His call to them is simple. Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. If you didn't know that Jesus said this, and he was to say, follow me, and I will make you to become something, what would you assume it might be? Maybe, if you didn't know this verse now, you know it, but if you didn't know it, would you really think that this would, this would be the first thing he said he would make you to become? Uh, no, many of us would assume that he would say, come ye after me, and I will make you to become better, or I'll make you to become holy, or I'll make you to become more spiritually mature. There are a lot of things. He could have said right there. But the first thing he says is, I'll make you to become fishers of men. God is concerned about the lost souls in this world. He wants everybody saved. That's paramount on his heart. So the first thing he tells his disciples, one of the first things he tells them. One of the, the first commands or speaking into his life is, come ye after me and I will make you fishers of men. Not only was it one of the first things he said, it was also one of the last things he said. In Matthew, the 28th chapter, you remember the Great Commission. Verse 19, the Lord says, Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So one of the first things he said and one of the last things he said is tell others about me. Fish for men. It was a call that changed their lives forever. For Jesus did not take these men, these simple Galilean fishermen, and he transformed, I should say he did take these men, these simple Galilean fishermen, and he transformed them into some of the greatest fishermen of men the world has ever seen. I'm convinced 
that Jesus wants to do the same thing in your life and in my life. He wants to take us just like we are with our faults, failures, idiosyncrasies, and rough edges. And he wants to transform us into fishers of men. Yes, with our faults, our failures. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. You got faults. You got failures. I got faults. And I have failures. But the Lord uses us anyway. It's very comforting for me to know that he uses simple men like these. If he can use them, I have a chance. They were not super duper saints. And that gives me hope that he will, able, he will even be able to use a person like me and like you. I know it'll take a miracle, but he does miracles. <laughs> the year was 1930, and it was the year of the Naval Conference in London. King George was to address the opening session. Radio was in its infancy. But through this media, the king's message was to be carried around the world. However, just before the king was to go on the air, a young engineer working for the Columbia Broadcasting Station ironically discovered a broken line in the transmitter. There was no time for repairs. The world was waiting to hear the message of the king. The young engineer thought of a quick solution. He took a piece of broken wire in one hand and a piece of broken wire in the other hand and for 15 minutes he took 250 volts of electricity through his body so that the king's broadcast could be heard. Like then the world is waiting to hear the message of the king and the one way for that message to go through is if we who profess to be his disciples, will be a conduit, a radio transmitter that broadcasts the message of the king. My question to you this morning is this. Will you allow the king's message of faith to be broadcast through you? Will you allow the glory of the king radiate through you? Will you allow the presence of the king be felt through you. So, this point has three minor points. The first one is, A, the candidates. The candidates. Peter and Andrew were already fishermen, but Jesus said, when I finish with you, you're going to be fishers of men. They already knew how to fish. Jesus was going to change their catch. Instead of fish, I'm changing your catch to men. The Lord can take the old skills from our past, redirect them, and use them for his glory. Moses was on the backside of the desert for 40 years. The Lord used his desert experience for 40 years and then had him to lead his people through the desert for 40 years. David was a shepherd of sheep. The Lord used his past and made him a shepherd of God's people, the nation of Israel. Joshua was a fighter. The Lord took his fighting ability and had him to fight the Lord's wars. Rahab was a harlot. The Lord took her from entertaining men to hosting the saints. The Lord can take your past and turn it around and work it out for his favor. God is telling Peter and Andrew, when I finish with you, I will make you fishers of men. The Lord is telling them, if you would just follow me, don't follow the trends, don't follow the money, don't follow the crowd, don't follow the popularity, but if you follow me, I will make you into what you cannot make yourself into. Peter had
had a lot of issues, yet he chose Peter. Some people have said Peter wore peppermint socks because of the way he loved to put his foot in his mouth. Some of y'all didn't get that. Can I say it again? Some people say Peter wore peppermint socks because of the way he loved to put his foot in his mouth. <laughs> but Jesus had a plan for his life. Peter had a temper like some of us. He was a hothead like some of us. He would later cut off someone's ear while he was going for their head like uh-huh, mm -hmm. He cussed like, mm -hmm. Peter had issues, yet the Lord used him. If we would be honest, again, all of us have issues and obstacles standing between what the Lord has called us to do. The reason we are alive today Breathing God's air and occupying God's space is because he plans to use us anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With your issues. Hallelujah. With your temper. Amen. With your heart here. I'm not saying he doesn't want you to correct it, but he'll use you where you are until you get to where you should be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peter was no match for a Roman soldier. So when he cut off one of the, their ears, what about the rest of them? You see, when the Lord is going to use you, he'll even protect you. Amen. Don't you know the rest of them, when they saw Peter swinging for his head and getting his ear, don't you know the rest of them would have taken their swords and killed Peter instantly? But because of Jesus and because of the call that the Lord had on Peter's life, they couldn't touch Peter. Some of us in here today, we would be dead if it wasn't for the Lord protecting us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that, that car on the interstate would have ran off the road and hit us and killed us. But the Lord kept it. You might be saying, but Bishop, no, no car ran off the road coming toward me, about to hit me. I know it. The Lord kept it from coming off the road, hitting you. You might be thinking, well, 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 well the Lord kept you from burning in a house fire. You might be saying, well, preacher, uh, we, we never been in an instance where the house was on fire. I never had to run for my life. I never was threatened by that. I know it. The Lord kept you from that. He kept the wiring from overheating. He kept the oven from exploding. He kept you from it. That's why you never experienced it. Because he's going to use you, and he can't use you dead. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He'll give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Thank you, Jesus. Peter may have thought he was bad. He may have thought he was tough. But he isn't anything if the Lord wasn't protecting him. The important thing is for us to give ourselves to God. Amen. So the first point is the candidates. The second one is the commitment. Be the commitment. Notice who, the, notice who these men left everything to follow. They left everything to follow Jesus. There was something about Jesus. Something in his voice. Something in the way he said, come ye and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. There was something in his eyes because anybody just can't come and say, come and follow me, and they drop everything they have. Leave their daddy. Leave their 
your business and follow him. There is something about the name of Jesus. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You remember when he saved you. Thank you, Jesus. Mark, the first chapter, verses 18 and 20, they say, and straightway they forsook their nets. Straightway, immediately. Something about that man. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And verse 20, and straightway he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. The word follow, verse 18, means to cleave to another, conforming to his example. In other words, these men left their nets, their boats, and life as they knew it to cleave to Jesus and to learn from him. Straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. You see, the kind of following the Bible is talking about is forsaking stuff. Like I said on last week, uh, it's the kind of following that will make uh, 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 an unmarried lady uh, leave her man who she can see and embrace a man who she can't see. It'll cause the drug addict to sell or get rid of all his stuff and go out of business. That's the kind of following the Bible is talking about. You see, the places you used to go, you don't go anymore. And the things you used to do, you don't do anymore. The kind of following that the Bible talks about is the following that will take you from the stripping pole to soul winning souls. Amen. Glory to God. Wait a minute, let me say this again. Because I work too hard for this. And I want you to appreciate it. The kind of following I'm talking about will take you from the stripping pole to winning souls. It'll take you from carrying knives to changing lives. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm talking about? It'll take you from shooting up to shouting up. Ah, that's the kind of forsaken I'm talking about. Many people are inspired by, by Jesus, but they are not biblically following Jesus. Following Jesus will change you. The call of God made them drop their nets. Have you dropped your nets? Have you left your old way of living? Ah, a mom and daughter were driving home after church one Sunday when the little girl began to ask her mommy some questions about the morning service. Mommy, there is something about the pastor's sermon this morning that I don't understand. He said that God is bigger than we are. He also said that God is so big that he could hold the whole world in his hands. Is that true, mommy? Is that true? The, the mother assured her daughter that the pastor was correct. The daughter then said, but mommy, he also said that God comes to live inside of us when we believe in Jesus as our Savior. Is that true, mommy? Is that true? Again, the mom assured her little girl that the pastor's words were true. Then, with a puzzled look on her face, the little girl asked, if God is bigger than we are and he lives in us, wouldn't he show through us? That's the kind of following that the Bible is talking about. The kind of following that will get everything else out and have God to show through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it may take some time, but that's the kind of following that the Bible is talking about. Following the Lord will show through. So 
There's also the criteria. See the criteria. Following the Lord is our job. Making us is his job. You don't make, you don't have to make yourself a fisher of men. All you have to do is follow him like the Bible shows us. If you follow him in the pursuit of him, it will change you. You've been asking the Lord to change you. But if you follow him, following him will change you. Following him will give you his heart. You'll want what he wants. The lost getting saved. Hallelujah. You'll want what he wants. The hurting getting healed. You'll want what he wants. The broken being restored. You'll want what he wants. You do the following, and the Lord will do the changing. Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. You're still going to be fishing, but you're not going to be fishing for what you were fishing for. You'll still be a thug, but you'll be a thug against the devil. You'll still be a hustler, but you'll be hustling for Jesus. You'll still be a fighter, but you'll be fighting the good fight of faith. You'll still be a runner, but you'll be running for the Lord. Hallelujah. Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me when you're strong and when you're wrong. Follow me when you're in faith and when you're in fear. Follow me when you're confused and when you got it all together. Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Mm. As they followed Jesus, they saw him going to places and interact with people that most religious, upstanding citizens would have nothing to do with. There was the woman at the well, and she said, the Jews don't have any dealings with the Samaritans, but he wasn't an ordinary Jew. He was the savior of the world. There was also a leper that he met. The lepers were supposed to be in colonies. They weren't supposed to be in, among the common people. But he spoke and healed the leper. There was a demoniac that he was so deranged he couldn't be around ordinary people. He found his living in the cemetery. But Jesus went to him. And delivered him. Hallelujah. There was a sinful woman, a woman whom Jesus had cast out seven devils, whose name was Mary Magdalene. He even healed her. There was a woman that was brought to him who was taken in adultery. The, uh, his accusers wanted him to stone the woman. But he forgave her and told her to go and sin no more. There's something about Jesus. Hallelujah. And the disciples saw it. He said, follow me. You're going to learn something. You're going to learn that I'm not prejudiced. You're going to learn that I'm not a bigot. You're going to learn that every life matters to God. If these disciples had followed most people around, they would have learned that Jesus uh, 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 just, uh, they would have learned that just people like us matters and nobody else. People in our economic bracket, people with our ethnic background, people with our skin color, people with our religious background, people with our uh, 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 whatever. <laughs> Hallelujah. But they all matter to Jesus. But you see, if anyone is different, then they are off limits to those kind of people. But not so with Jesus. He loved them all and reached out to everyone, regardless of who they were or where they were. Can I testify a minute? You see, if, if the Lord uh, went just to the rich people or the well-to-do people, then I wouldn't have a chance. Some of us wouldn't have had a chance. Yes, 
Hezekiah went to the people who had clout and dignity in the community, many of us would have been left behind. You haven't always lived where you were. But the Lord will go to people who live in housing projects. Glory to God. Whose mom might be on welfare. Whose daddy might be a garbage man. It doesn't matter to God. He'll find you wherever you are. He loves the rich and the poor. Glory to God. He found me, a little big-headed boy in the housing project. Where we lived in a court. We couldn't have a car. And if we could have a car, we had to park it way down the street. And you couldn't have a good car. Because if you had a good car, the neighbors would be so jealous, they'll scratch it up. Glory to God. And then if it was raining or snowing, you would have to walk a long way. There was no such thing as a driveway. Everybody saw you coming and everybody saw you going. When you made groceries, you had to take the bags all the way up the court. Everybody said. But Jesus didn't care. He saw me where I was and saved me in the projects, from the projects, and gave a charge to me, a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, and ever dying soul to save, and fit him for the sky. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Others of y'all, forgive me. I, wa I wasn't born in royalty like you were. I didn't have a silver spoon in my mouth like you had. My daddy wasn't a senator like yours. He wasn't a professor of the college like yours. Forgive me, y'all, for being raised in the project. But God forgave me. It didn't matter to God. He loved me just as much, if not more. Glory to God. He saved me anyway. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Glory to God. Pastor Barbara and I would just love to have you and the people of New Life Worship Center to come to visit with us. Uh, we have two morning worship services at 8 o'clock and 11, and we have a Wednesday night service at 7.30. We would just love to see you, and, and, and if it's no imposition, after the service, come up and let us know that you came. We would love to hug you and tell you how glad we are that you are with us on today. Come, receive the word, leave, and experience the difference at New Life.